okay, where did I put that password? Bank login? Nope. Email? Uh, I'm drowning in a tangled mess of passwords. If this sounds familiar, then I've got the perfect solution for you. Hey fellow tech lovers, it's Keith from KL Tech Videos, and today I'm pumped to introduce you to Vault Warden. It's like your own personal super secure fortress for all your passwords. Tired of subscription fees with your password manager? Want more control over your sensitive data? Then you need to check out Vault Warden. It's the free, self-hosted, awesome alternative to Bitwarden. And in this video, I'm taking you step by step through setting up your own Vault Warden container with Docker. Thanks for joining me with another video on KL Tech Videos. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to deploy Vault Warden. First, let's take a look at the GitHub page. You will notice that the project has over 31,000 stars. It's the unofficial Bitwarden compatible server, which is written in Rust. And it has over 56 releases going for as far back as 2018. Now, the real advantage to Vault Warden is that you can host your own password manager on your own server or computer, offline if you want, or you can host it online, but secured. It's a great alternative to what is becoming a very increasing cost amongst the self-hosting community and the wider technical public themselves in hosting password managers or even subscribing to password managers that are online. The other factor is bigger online password manager organizations are susceptible to targeted attacks because they are one giant organization that is known to everyone. Where you self-hosting this on your server, if offline, almost impossible to even reach. However, that compared to being a well-known organization means you are less likely to become on the radar for things like this uh, and, and attacks and hacks. So it's very easy to deploy a uh, Vault Warden, um, and we'll jump into that now. So if we bring up the Compose file, it's a very simple Compose file. We've literally got Vault Warden, the image. We've got one environmental URL, which is signups allowed true. The cool thing about this is after you've set up your first administrative account, you can literally go back into the Compose, put that to false, and then no one else can get on your server and, and create an account if you don't want them to. Now, the default port is 8080, sorry, 80 on the outside, 80 on the inside. But I have created this port 9666 because I do have things on port 80. Um, so you can change that, make it as you will, as usual. And then obviously we need a place to bind mount. On this server, we do run Windows. If you're on Linux, you may have to change this for a different format, such as forward slashes instead of backslashes. Find a directory you're comfortable with. Once you've bind mounted that, you're ready to go. We're going to select all and copy. And then we're going to jump over into Dockage, which is an alternative to Portainer. Hit Compose. You can obviously use your standard Compose up if you want to. I'm using this. And we can see that that's been all added there. And all we've got to do then is just type in Vault Warden or lowercase and hit Deploy. Yes, we want to give access to the area that it wants because that's the directory we set. And it's as simple as that. Now, if you have Nginx Proxy Manager, you could create a domain for this. And if you had AdGuard, you could create an internal domain for this. Both videos I'll have linked in the description below. For now, we're just going to click on the 966 port, which will take us to Vault Warden's main interface. Now you just type in your IP address and the port or localhost and the port to 9666 if you kept the port the same as myself. All we've got to do here is simply click create account. Once you've created your account, you can simply log in. And that brings us to the main interface of Vault Warden. Now, all you've really got to do is install the apps on your phones and your tablets and whatever else you've got, and then just point it back to here, which I'll show you in a second. 
while we're still thinking about it, if we head back over to Dockage or your Compose file and click Edit, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to change this to false and deploy. And that locks down our uh, Vault Warden installation so that no one else can create an account. They can get to the main page, they can click create account, they can fill out their details, but as soon as they get down to the bottom, try and click create, it'll tell them that no signups are allowed. And that's another way of locking down the attack surface. And stopping other people from using uh, essentially what is your server. Now, if you're hosting this offline and you're not going to attach it to a domain or an internal domain, for example, something like that, you don't really need to worry about doing that environment variable. But again, it's good practice if you're not uh, going to be having any of your family or friends on there. Uh, just, just lock it down. There's no need to have that open any, any longer than you need to, really. Plus, if you want to change your mind, you can always come back and, and put that back up as well. Uh, so that's fine. Um, essentially... You're good to go. This is Vault Warden. This is set up. Um, but we are going to uh, pop a domain name on here. Like I say, the I'm not going to show you the whole process to do that because I have covered that in Nginx Proxy Manager, which I will link in the description below. Um, but you're about to see this hit a different domain name now uh, with an SSL certificate as well. Now, as you can see, I have my uh, domain name here with SSL and it's a secure connection. Um, the important thing to take away when you're creating a domain or a subdomain for this is I wouldn't label it vault warden dot something something. I would make it inconspicuous. Um, you don't want people targeting this and I can be damn sure there are people out on the internet scanning subdomains looking for vault warden or password manager or something. So as you can see with mine, it says doghouse dot da 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 so make it inconspicuous, reduce the attack surface, especially if you're going to be hosting this on online. Like I have just exposed this now. Um, ideally, you would just keep this on an internal domain. My production vault warden is not exposed to the internet. It is running on an internal domain with Nginx Proxy Manager and AdGuard DNS rewrites. Check out the video in the description below for both of those on how to do that. Um, and the advanced uh, tip section for AdGuard is going to be needed as well. So pick what you need to jump to the sections you need to get there. Um, essentially, uh, with this now, we can just create a new item. Um, and let's just say this was uh, Facebook. Facebook.com. Um, just Facebook username. Um, the, one of the cool things I do like about this, by the way, is the, um, the ability to generate a password as well. So if we click on generate a password, it actually cycles through a lot of them for us, which is really cool. But the one thing I really, really like is the extension that you can download. So with the extension, you would just literally uh, click on um, self-hosted. You would then type in the website address or domain that you have set to point to your server. In my case, that will be doghouse. Click save. And then you would put in the email address that you signed your account up with. And the password. And that would get you into your account. Um, and for all intents and purposes, you are actually in your account. Now, one of the things I would highly recommend at this point would be to set up um, a TOTP authenticator. Now, this one will be for your master vault, your, your main account. And I would do that on a different provider than... Um, Vault Warden itself, such as Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator, something separate to Vault Warden. And that makes it extremely difficult um, for anyone to try and uh, brute force your password. Um, but while we're in the extension, by the way, and you could download this Chrome, Firefox, uh, I'm in the Brave browser. Um, it's really cool because as we were creating um, an account here, I find it much better to create accounts while I'm on the website using the extension. And the reason for that is because you can actually get a username generator uh, and you can have a few different things. You can even have a catch all email address or a plus email address to what you've already set up. And I just find it really, really cool. So that's a really cool one. So we could click that, that would be our username. And then again, the password, the generator in here is a lot better than the web interface I find. Uh, and you could specify a lot of different values in here and then just click save on that as well. And again, uh, normally it would populate this in the name field for you, the URL that you were in. 
but we can click there. Now, at this point, if you already have um, a TOP, TOTP set up on Facebook, you could disable that, re-enable it, and put the, the authenticator key in here, or the QR code, uh, and then you could save it, and then your authenticator code for Facebook would be saved inside here. The reason why that's really good is because when you're in, uh, when you're logging into Facebook, once you've select, well, you've got the drop down on the field from the extension, and you've selected, oh, this is my password from Facebook. It automatically copies the TOTP code. So you just paste that in, and it lets you in. And it's really, really cool. Um, really, really cool. So I think that's a really good plus. So if we click save on here. And after so much time, it will actually synchronize back to your main server, usually pretty much straight away. Um, but there is, you can force the synchronization as well by going in here and clicking Sync Vault now. While we're in the settings, by the way, for the extension, uh, one of the things I like to do is go to the autofill page. Um, I like to make sure that uh, when the field is selected on focus, uh, autofill on page load. And at the bottom here where it says base domain, I like to go with starts with. Because especially with my self-hosted services, I have a lot of subdomains that are different at the beginning. Um, and I'm sure a lot of websites can be like that too. So I like to select starts with on there. And that's my recommendation for those settings. Now you can actually do unlock with pin, unlock with biometrics. And of course, you've got your two-step login, which is exactly what I would suggest that you do. You will need to do it in there. It as you can see, look, I didn't save that. I clicked out of it and Facebook uh, from the extension has already been saved. Now, if we go up here to our settings page, we go to account settings uh, and we go to security. Uh, one of the first things that I think you should definitely be doing here is enabling the two step logging feature. And again, you've got quite a few options here. If you have the UV key, you can do it here. You can use email verifications if you set up the um the environment of variables, but I find that the most secure and fastest method is to just set up an authenticator app. Uh, and if you literally click on manage, you type your master password back in. And at this point, you can literally go on to uh, your favorite authenticator app. I'm using Google uh, Authenticator. Get that in there, get it working, put the digits in, click turn on. Honestly, if you're exposing this to the internet, this should be the bare minimum you take away from this guide is to enhance your vault protection. Lock this down with uh, two-factor authentication. And the other thing you can do is download the official Bitwarden uh, mobile app uh, and install that on your tablets and your mobile phones. It's very, very similar to setting it up as we did at the beginning of this video. Your first click self-hosted. Um, and then you will fill out your domain name. Then you will log in with your email and password. And if you've set up two-factor authentication, that will install there as well. I can't actually record the screen on my Android phone um, because Bitwarden has special permissions in the phone, protections rather, that stop uh, an overlay taking a screenshot or a recording of that security-wise. I could, suppose, I could uh, film externally. Um, but it's so similar to how I've set up at the beginning of this video on the web interface um, that it's just copying that basically for the mobile app. Very similar. Something else that I highly recommend you do is also invest in a password register or an offline uh, book equivalent such as this. Um, the reason for that is simply because you are going to want to follow the 321 backup rule. You can Google the meaning of that, but one important section is an offline backup or an offsite backup. And this book is brilliant. This gives you literally quite a lot. I've got it in front of me now. Um, um, this is the book. This, the author is a close friend of mine. Uh, and basically, you can't see anything in here, by the way, because I actually use Invisible Ink. And I'll also put a, a link in for the description there. Don't press too hard in the book. You don't leave any indents. And you can salt and pepper your passwords as well, which means putting some random characters, numbers, and letters at the beginning and end of every password. So even if someone was able to get this book, get through the invisible ink with the ultraviolet pen, they'd still not be able to have your passwords. Um, really great book. Please check it out. That's been Vault Warden. Um, I hope you found this video uh, interesting. Please check out the Nginx Proxy Manager AdGuard and AdGuard Advanced Tips videos below. If you want to chuck this on a domain, if you want to have this accessing uh, externally or internally only, those videos will help you out. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.